Okay, well today's video is a little bit different. Uh, I saw a video from another YouTuber, a, a big time YouTuber recently. The, it's not fishing related, but I think the topic that he covers applies to every kind of YouTube channel there is out there. And uh, this one was from uh, a guy called The Guitologist. He, he has a guitar YouTube channel and is, I mean, as you can see, I would be watching stuff like that. But not everybody who's into fishing and has these smaller channels and stuff watches channels like his. So they might have missed out on this story. And uh, I'll link to his video down below as well as uh, the, the channel that he was mentioning in it. But basically there was a, a rather large channel. Uh, 50,000 plus subscribers. The guy's name was Kenneth Russell. And his channel got hacked, and it, he, he lost everything. And YouTube basically, once that happens, YouTube doesn't help you. You have to start over from the very beginning. And, uh, I mean, for him, being as, as big as he was, and then with the Gatologist's help, uh, he's, in a matter of days, he's already up back to at least 2,000 subscribers, so he's monetized again. But he's not at the 50,000 where he was. I mean, that's... 50,000 subscribers, if you're getting the right amount of views, that, that's enough to make your living on YouTube. You can quit your job and all that. So, basically, if, if this could happen to him, it could happen to anybody. And uh, it, uh, it, it, it sounds like something that you should know better on, but in, in reality, it's, it very easily could fool anyone. And what happened was he got... Uh, I've, I've actually gotten several of these uh, uh, comments and stuff on, on YouTube videos and stuff myself, similar ones. And he got a comment, or he got a, uh, an email from a company uh, asking about sponsoring one of his videos. And they wanted him to go onto their website and download their software and connect his YouTube channel to it. And then do an advertisement and they would pay him. And the whole thing sounded extremely legitimate. I mean, it's, it's stuff that this guy did all the time. And he get, they ended up taking over his account and removing him from his own channel and taking over it and basically mining it for money until YouTube shut it down. And uh, uh, so instead of going too much into that, uh, I figured I would uh, go over what I do to avoid that kind of thing. And uh, if you really want to look into what really happened there, his channel and the Gatologist video are going to be linked down in my description. But basically, the easiest way for me, well, it, maybe not with a, a company sending me an email like that, but I, what I get a lot are uh, YouTube alerts. I get these emails, I'll, I'll go and post and edit and I'll put it up right here somewhere, a picture of it. I get them all the time, multiple times a day. And it looks, the look of the email looks genuine. Uh, there's a few things that are off about it. Number one, you look at the email address where it's coming from. Sometimes they mask the email and you can't tell. But I, I can I can read the email through the app that I use. And it's never actually an official YouTube email. It's from some other email account. Uh, but the easiest way for me to avoid those scams is that I have separate email accounts. I have my Google account that I have connected to my AdSense and to my YouTube channel. And I have an, uh, an email account that I set up for business inquiries and my fishing tournaments and all that. So if it was a real notification and I was getting, like I get, get uh, emails saying I've been flagged for inappropriate videos and I need to edit it and stuff. And they're trying to fish me. They want me to go and sign in so they can steal my information and take my account. And uh, the reason I can always immediately spot that it's fake is because they're sending it to the wrong email address. So my number one tip to everybody out there is separate your emails, have multiple emails. And uh, my Google account, if, if these emails were real, they would send it to my Google account, not to my professional email address, uh, my business email. So that's the number one thing. If I get it in my business email, I automatically know it's fake. I'll, I'll post a screenshot or something right here again and um, yeah so that's a big thing so if you're a smaller channel or something or even if you're a big channel and you've never actually done it separate the emails have a public email for your fans or whatever to contact you and then have a separate 
Google account for your AdSense. Um, once you get locked out of your account, Google, YouTube really doesn't care because what, what they did to this guy was they took over his account and they started posting tons of videos that would draw views, but you know, it would just, it would generate a lot of money quickly before YouTube shut it down. And uh, YouTube is also making money off of that because they're making money on the advertisement. So they don't really care if your account gets hacked because they're still making money on it. And uh, so that's why I was saying the uh, separate emails, that's, that's the best way to, to fight off the phishing scams. Um, the hacking one, like what would happen to him, I'll get comments and emails every once in a while asking me to go. And I see people on Facebook and stuff doing it too. Like they, everybody's using this one app that like it keeps track of your milestones and stuff. But I, and when I looked at it, they want access to my YouTube channel. And that's my number one rule is nobody gets access to my channel except for me. So it, all these apps that are promising to boost your, your views and boost your subscribers and keep track of your milestones and all that, I don't trust any of them. I'm, I'm, I'm being paranoid, but you, you kind of have to be. Never give anybody access to your account, regardless of how trustworthy you think they are. Because a really trustworthy ad agency that's going to boost your numbers like that, they're not going to go out of their way to leave a comment on, on a random video of yours. So if you get a comment telling you that they're going to boost your subscribers or an email or something, it's bullshit. Don't do it segueing into the second part here I, I've all I've been thinking about doing a video about uh, sponsorships and pro staffs like I'm wearing my Runkle hat here I actually just got this in today from Runkle uh, I am a pro staffer for Runkle uh, they're not a sponsor of mine they I am a pro staffer for them we have a deal worked out uh, the number one thing for people to realize on when you're dealing with pro staffers or sponsorships or professionals pro staff does not mean professional it means promotional they're giving you a discount or whatever it is to promote their items uh, personally I don't like just receiving a discount it's not it's not worth it for me because I'm my the point of my channel is not to spend a whole bunch of money so Runkle here it's probably the best company I've come across they send me a couple of things every month to do videos on and to review and it's completely free I don't have to pay anything and that's what I like I will gladly promote a company if they send me free stuff like Runkle does but that leads to another thing to keep an eye out for there is a scam an Amazon scam going on and I I, I, I did it for a little while because I thought it was interesting but it just wasn't worth it for me and it became much more of a hassle than it really than it's worth. And basically, what it is is these e Amazon sellers will email you. Amazon sellers will email you, asking you to test out their items for free, just to leave them an Amazon review. They don't even really care if you do a YouTube video on it or not. Some of them want you to do a YouTube video so maybe you can generate some sales for them. But where it becomes a scam is they want you to buy the item and then they'll refund you the money later uh i'm not going to do that because most of the time i don't have the money up front to begin with uh the few times i did do something like that they sent me the money through paypal and then i had to withdraw it from paypal and go and use it on amazon to buy their item and that is really it's it's unethical. It's not illegal. It's not technically against the rules. I mean, it is against Amazon's rules, actually. But it's unethical is the main thing. And I, I stopped doing it. But I was getting several, several emails every day from different companies wanting me to try out their products. And they were promising to send me the money to pay for it. Uh, the number one issue with it is they never sent you the right amount of money. Uh, they, they never seem to understand that PayPal or whatever service you're using takes out a fee. So say their item is $15, they're going to send you exactly $15. And then you got to pay the fee, or it comes out of that amount when you get the, get the money into your PayPal account. And then to withdraw it quick, quick enough, it's another fee. And then when you go on to Amazon to buy it, you have to pay for shipping and you have to pay for the sales tax. So it's you end up spending the money anyway. 
And uh, yeah, the main reason I stopped doing it is not not just because it's unethical, but because they kept doing that to me, and they wanted me to spend like money out of my pocket to do a free item. So that's it's not free if I have to pay for it. And they would get upset when I would tell them that they didn't send me enough money. So I stopped doing that. I cut all those people off. It's not really necessarily a scam to you, but it could be because they could easily uh, take that money back. They could say, they could file a complaint with PayPal and say you ripped them off for something you sold them and they'll get their money back and then you're screwed. Uh, you got their worthless item and you're out double the amount of money. So uh, not really double the amount of money, but the money you spent on top of the money they gave you is taken back. So um, it, it can be lucrative, but the best way to do Amazon reviews, honestly, is to just go and buy the item yourself. If it's something that you're interested in, buy the item, test it out, and review it, and give an honest review. Don't let one of these companies, uh, I've, like I've had companies tell me I can't say anything negative about it. I never really cared what they said because I knew they were scammers anyway, so I always tried to give honest reviews. And if an item's not worth it, I will tell you it's not worth it. And most of those items were not worth it. Um, but like if it's an outside, a company that's got their own website and they sell their own things and they're willing to actually ship you the item at absolutely no cost and they don't want you to buy it from their website or from Amazon beforehand, then it, it, it might be worth checking out for you. Uh, I've done that with a handful of companies and uh, really the only one that's been worthwhile for me has been Rumble. And I've got another deal, sort of a deal worked out with American Tackle. I'm a pro staffer for them. Uh, they don't send me free stuff every month like Runkle does. But they're not quite as strict about how much I, pro I promote them. Like, like Runkle, not that they're strict. They do have uh, requirements, which, I mean, if they're spending this much money to send me stuff, they expect something in return. So it makes sense for them to have requirements. American Tackle has no requirements. But they don't just randomly send me stuff. Like, I'll, I'll go to their website, I'll buy stuff, and probably about half the time, they load up the box with a bunch of other freebies. So that that makes it worth it for me. And, uh, yeah, so you just really got to look out for what company is offering you a pro staff membership. And pro staff doesn't mean you're professional. A lot of companies out there, they'll they'll say, oh, if, you're, if you promote our brand, we'll give you 10% off. But if you look at it, they give everybody 10% off anyway because everybody gets all these codes and stuff for free on Instagram and all that. So it's not really worth it for that. Now with Runkle, I do actually have a code for my viewers in my description that gives you 10% off. And that is actually so they can track what I sell for them. And it's, uh, yeah, if you've wanted to try something from Runkle, try it out, use that, that uh, code. And it's going to be expiring pretty soon, so I might be getting a new one. I don't know if they're going to renew the code for me or not. Uh, but, yeah, I am getting a little off track here. So, um, uh, I guess that's really about it. Just really be careful with uh, Amazon reviewers. Because there's a lot of sellers on Amazon that they're breaking the Amazon rules by contacting you and asking you to buy their items and then refunding you the money or whatever it is. That's uh, Amazon can shut down your account for that, so don't do it. Uh, I did do it a couple of times, but I wasn't happy with it. I stopped doing it. Uh, on to segment number three. Uh, everybody out there is always looking up stuff on how to grow their channels, which this kind of ties into the first part about the guy getting fished and hacked because uh, he was looking to grow and expand his channel some more. And uh, uh, number one thing I'm going to say, I'm going to put it out there right now, do not do sub for sub. Sub for sub is, for one, it's against Google and YouTube's policies. If they find out you're doing it, they can shut down your account. Uh, go out there. Don't do sub for sub. Go to Facebook. Join all these YouTube video groups, stuff about whatever your channel's about. Like mine's fishing. I am in so many different fishing groups. Uh, I really try to avoid doing sub for sub. but uh, uh, So I just go in there. I'll post a video. Every time I post a video, it, it seems like it's spam. But most of these groups are designed for this, so it's not really spamming a group. 
uh, most of the groups I'm in encourage you to post your videos every week. So do that, and, but most of all, be interactive on your YouTube channel itself. Uh, you're going to want to post as many videos as you can, as often as you can. Ideally, you want to do one per day. Uh, I used to do one per day. I couldn't do up, keep up with it anymore. I cut down to three per week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I couldn't even keep up with that anymore. Now I just do on Fridays. And the last couple weeks here, I've been doing Mondays and Fridays, so I'm trying to get back into that. That is how you really grow your channels, putting them out as much as you can. But what a lot of people don't don't realize is that when you get comments on your on your channel and your videos and all that, interact with the people that are commenting. I mean, if it's if it's random hate for no reason, just ignore it completely. Uh, look, YouTube is actually cracking down on harassment and bullying now. So if you want to do something to to retaliate against these people that are hating on you for no reason, you can report them for abuse. Uh, it, it still sort of helps your account that even if they're giving you thumbs down because it's still activity on your videos. And that's what the YouTube algorithm is looking at is the activity that are on your videos. Um, for instance, I did a, two videos last week about fishing the, the river walk downtown when it was drained. And I had no idea at the time how controversial those videos were going to be, but I got a lot of hate for those because I, I'm not going to get into it here, but people didn't like that I did that. And even with all the thumbs down and everything, those videos got more views than any videos I've put out in the past two months. So those two videos combined in back to back days got more videos and more views in those two days than even my biggest videos got in those two days. So, I mean, they've slowed down since then, but uh, yeah, so you want to put out as much as you can and you want to interact with the commenters and stuff like that. Try not to just try to ignore the haters. Try not to engage with them. Uh, of course, I've got a bad attitude myself, so I can't that this is why my channel is at 3,600 subscribers instead of 36,000 is because all these things I'm telling you to do, I can't follow my, uh, my own advice. I don't post often enough. I interact with haters and uh, I don't interact enough with the people that do leave positive comments. I, I try to at least give everybody a heart because they'll get notified and it might draw them back to my camera that I, or my, my, my channel that I've given them a, a heart or something. And <clears throat> yeah, that's my interactions. But the, the best interactions you can actually do is to go to other fishing channels, especially smaller channels, uh, but even the big ones too. Go out there and watch a John B video and leave a comment that, you know, make, put something funny. Don't be, a, don't be a random troll hater. Put something funny about the video. Put something about your knowledge out there that's going to get people to see that comment and want to look at your channel. Uh, the smaller channels and stuff, go and connect with the people that are putting these videos out. Talk to the other YouTubers through their comments. Because when you do that, other people are going to see the interaction that you have and they're more likely to be drawn to your channel. Uh, I have gotten, and it's not just fishing videos, go to, to whatever your interests are, like my guitars and stuff. Uh, uh, I do have a separate channel just for guitars, but most of the time when I'm watching guitar videos, it's on this fishing channel. And I'll go on music videos and guitar videos and stuff, and I'll leave comments, I'll make jokes and stuff, and I have actually drawn a lot of subscribers from doing that. Just because people will see it, They'll see my channel and they're like, hey, we have more than one mutual interest. Like this guy likes guitars and he likes fishing. So do I. So that's that's a huge way to grow your channel is the interaction. And uh, uh, a lot of people ask me how I was actually able to get as big as I did in the first place. And in, in everybody's opinion, everybody watching this, I know it, you know it. My channel is bigger than it should be. It really is. Uh, I, I'm trying my hardest to put more work and more effort and everything into it to grow it. But the reason my channel took off when it did was a complete accident. I hadn't even actually started posting fishing videos yet. My channel, when I first started, I, I opened up this account in 2015. I did not post my first fishing video until sometime in 2016. And... 
it was a terrible video. Like I didn't know what any any of the species of fish were. I didn't know what I was doing. So my channel is really a a, a chronicle of my experience as a fisherman. Starting if you go back and watch the early videos, you can see how far I've come. And uh, especially with cameras and editing and just my general knowledge of fishing. But that's not why my channel took off. What happened with me was when I started my channel in 2015, it wasn't meant for people to be watching. I was using it because I had videos on my phone that I wanted to back up. I wanted to store them somewhere. I didn't want to just put them on Google Drive or something like that. I wanted to be able to go straight to a website and just watch them without having to download them again. So I started putting them on YouTube. Uh, it was a handful of uh, Michael Jackson videos that I recorded at a tribute concert. And uh, those really don't have any views. I've never earned any money on them. I don't think I should because it's not my my content. But I also had some some meme videos. What really made my channel take off was uh, I'll even post like a screenshot of it or something here. Uh, I put a video up of some guy with an early smartphone, if, if it was even a smartphone, playing Darude Sandstorm on his phone. And it wasn't my video, I just downloaded it from some random website because I liked it. And I put it on YouTube so I could watch it when I wanted to or show it to my friends. And a meme website, it was something like Dank Memes or something like that. I'm not, I never even actually saw the website. They found it on my channel and they shared it on their website and it blew up. I had at least 40,000 views on that video with no SEO or any kind of uh, research put into it, no fancy thumbnail, no uh, video title, nothing like that. It was just the rude sandstorm on phone. That's what I put. No tags or anything in the in the description. That was it. And it blew up to like 40,000 views in like a month. And it, it, that the, my subscribers started climbing. That's what got me like thinking like I could really capitalize on this. I could take advantage of it and put out videos and potentially start earning money. And uh, when I finally got my channel monetized, I started putting out, I was actually putting out video game videos. Uh, I wanted to do a gaming channel, but it just wasn't really working. But all the views were coming from that. It eventually ended up getting copyrighted and deleted. So 40,000 views and all those subscribers right there, basically gone, but I kept the subscribers and the view count even though the video was gone. But that's what really got my channel started. And then one day a friend of mine gave me an aquarium and uh, I decided to do, do a video on that. And to this day, that is my number one most viewed video is that aquarium video. Even though I am not proud of it at, at all, I'm actually kind of embarrassed of it. Uh, if I could, I would delete it, but it's one of my highest, it's my highest earning video of all time. It's not earning quite as much as it used to, and it's, I've got other videos now that are earning more. But I can't delete it because that video alone has made me a couple thousand dollars. So why would I delete something that's potentially going to give me thousands of dollars? Uh, so yeah, that's, that was it. It was a complete accident, a stolen meme is what got my channel started. So a lot of the times when you're trying to grow your channel and everything, you really just have to get lucky. And uh, yeah, so uh, even though I didn't do any fishing today, hopefully you enjoyed this or you at least learned something or got an idea for a tip to use on, on protecting your account or something. Uh, I don't think I actually got into everything I wanted to get to, into, but I'm looking at my count and I'm about to hit 27 minutes right now. And that is a lot longer than I wanted this video to be. So I'm going to cut it off here. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And help each other out on YouTube. Stop being such a toxic community. See you next time.